Hi Rose, today's video is my top 10 must-dos or my top 10 things to do at Epcot. Epcot has really grown on me in the past few trips. I never used to really like it too much, but I really love the World Showcase and I just love the whole atmosphere of Epcot. I do think some bits of Future World need updating, but there's just more about Epcot now that I appreciate and it's just really interesting and I've just found myself loving it a lot more than I used to. Number one is Club Cool. Club Cool is kind of a Coca-Cola run shop and they do in their different flavours of pop from around the world. You can try all the different drinks. There's, I think there's probably about seven that you can try and it's all free, you don't have to pay for it. You get like little tester cups which you can have and the infamous one is the Beverly which is really bitter. I actually don't mind it but most people don't like the Beverly. So that's one thing to try, go try the Beverly. But anyway, it's just a really cool shop and I always go in there if I want like a bit of a cool down. So if you're feeling really hot, you just nip into Club Cool, have a bit of a drink, a bit of a taste of all the different pops. It's just really nice. Number two is exploring the World Showcase. I love the World Showcase. It's just so beautiful. I love the whole idea of it, that it's people from all around the world, from all these different countries, all coming together in one place to celebrate unity and an acceptance of all the different cultures. And within the World Showcase is all the different pavilions which are representing a country. Now I like within these pavilions is just exploring them, like there's loads of little nooks and crannies which you wouldn't think of or which you wouldn't see upon first glance. So I love like, I guess going off the beaten path maybe. So you're going into all these little nooks and crannies, having an explore, going around the backs of things. There's loads of details which you can see there. And I just really love it. I just really love the World Showcase. Number three is meeting characters around the world. So around the World Showcase, you can meet all the different characters which the stories originally came from. So you can meet Snow White in Germany, you can meet Mulan in China, you can meet Belle and Aurora in France. There's loads of different characters that meet. Also at the International Gateway, I think it's between England and France, they've got the International Gateway, which is where you can take the friendship boat over to the Boardwalk, Yacht and Beach Club and Hollywood Studios. There sometimes rare characters come out and characters that are training. This is also the same for by the American Pavilion where characters who are training come out. So there's loads of different characters that sometimes pop out like Hercules and Meg, Ariel, Eric. I met Max, Goofy's son there. So you can always find characters wandering around. I've seen Cinderella wandering around there before. So you never know which characters are gonna pop up. Number four is watching Illuminations from the UK. In particular, I love to watch Illuminations from the UK Pavilion because I seem to do it every year. It's just become like a little tradition getting some chips and watching Illuminations from the UK. I don't even know why that, that just started though and I've just kept it going ever since really. Number five is Test Track. Test Track is such a good ride. It's not only quite interesting in the fact that you get to create your own little car, you get to design it, get to see what the specs are from it. You go through the simulation of testing your car and the ride's just really fun. It's fast paced so at one point it speeds up to like 60 miles an hour. I think it's 60 miles an hour. So at one point it speeds up and zooms around the outside and it's just a really fun ride to go on. Number six is to do Under the Seas with Nemo and then explore the seas. Now Under the Seas with Nemo is like a little, it's similar to the aerial ride in Magic Kingdom, but it actually has real fish and you go through like the real aquarium and it's all themed around finding Nemo. And I just like being able to see all the real animals and stuff, as well as you get off the ride into a bit called the Seas Pavilion. And this is where they've got loads of different sea creatures. It's like, it is just like a massive aquarium. They've got dolphins, they've got rays, they've got loads of different fish. And it's just really interesting to go and explore that bit. They have a dolphin show that's on. Well, I say dolphin show, it's where, you know, the trainer comes out and speaks a little bit about the dolphins and they do like a little, fetch game and stuff like that but it's just really interesting it's really nice to see and i just like aquariums and stuff and it's all about conservation as well so they're all about like conserving nature and wildlife so it's none of this like zoo kind of ordeal where they're shoved in little tanks and stuff they've got a lot of space to swim around and there's a whole backstage area where they have as well where they look after the animals so it's just really interesting to see and they've got manatees as well they've got these awesome manatees that are dead cute and they just like float around and i saw them getting fed last time and i was like no look at the little manatees well i say little manatees they're pretty huge but number seven is shopping around the world going back to the world showcase in each country you've got shops which have items in which are related to that country or which are from that country so you can find loads of different sweets food 
you know, merchandise which is representing it, so like t-shirts. And in England, for example, you can get Down Snabby merchandise, Doctor Who merchandise. In Japan, you get a lot of anime merchandise and things based around Japanese culture. So it's just really cool. My favorite shop has got to be the one in Japan as it's just got like loads of Pokemon stuff and it's got Sailor Moon stuff and I really like them, so. And there's loads of sweets as well. And there's loads of Japanese sweets, which are really awesome. Number eight is Spaceship Earth. Spaceship Earth is, and it's just one of them rides that I always have to go on every time I go. It's really interesting, it's historical, it's narrated by Judi Dench. It's just really unique, I think. It's in the Epcot Globe or the Giant Golf Ball or whatever you're gonna call it. And it's just really unique and interesting and it's just a great ride to go on. And it's good for people of all ages as well. And it's on about the journey of humans and it's you know our journey on your spaceship Earth, as it says. So it's going through the ages. It starts back from like Roman times, even earlier than that. It starts off with like caveman times. And my favorite thing of that whole ride is definitely when the great library of Alexandria is burning and that smell of burning papyrus is just so nice. It's like gross at the same time, but it's really nice and and it's just, I just really like that smell. Number nine is eating around the world. You definitely have to go and try something new and eat around the world when you're at Epcot because every pavilion has all different foods which are from them countries basically and also during the food and wine festival they'll have a lot more booths out. I've not really eaten much around the world because being vegan now I can't really eat everything but there is certain pavilions where I can have stuff from and I'm really excited for the food and wine festival which I'll be going to this year as they have a lot of vegan options apparently which I'm really excited for. I think my favourite pavilion to eat at has to be Japan because they do a vegetarian sushi which is really good. Finally, number 10 is Journey into the Imagination with Figment. This is one of my favourite rides at Epcot because it's just really cute and it's fun and it's just the song's really nice and it's probably more based towards children but... I just love Figment, he's a little purple dragon, he's really cute. Just the idea of the whole ride, it's that just with one little spark of imagination, you can do anything. And just the idea of that is just so inspiring that this little spark could create anything, it could be anything. You know, all it takes is something small to create something massive. And every single idea starts with just that little spark. And I just love the idea of that. Sadly, I think this ride won't last much longer at Epcot because it is a bit outdated. It never really has a queue, so not many people really go on it. I do think it isn't gonna last very long, so go on it while you still can and experience it while you still can. Anyway, that was my top 10 things to do at Epcot. I do have a Magic Kingdom one, which I did like, oh, I think it was a while ago now. It was probably like a few months ago. And I will be doing some for Animal Kingdom and Hollywood Studios. The Animal Kingdom one will probably be next and I'll probably, delay the Hollywood Studios one for quite a while because there isn't that much to do at Hollywood Studios nowadays because it's kind of a mess, especially with all the refurbs that are going on creating Star Wars land. So I'm probably gonna end up waiting to do that one until all its refurbs are done, which could take some time. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. Leave me a comment down below with what your favorite thing to do at Epcot is and I shall see you later, bye. So today I'm coming to you with my top 10 must do's of Magic Kingdom. These are things that I have to do every single time that I go. Number 10 is eating at Pinocchio's. 